The question is how bad is that behavior to begin with? They've never qualified what uh, that is. And we say this is problematic because the state can always harass rich people to actually support whatever their political cost is, ladies and gentlemen. And we do think that that's a very clear harm. Second thing I talked to you about, this was never responded to even by the whip speaker, who's, you know, a PhD graduate, is that it's unjust to take away the right of parents to dispose their property. Because that property was something which that person, you know, created. Um, you know, the wealth was, was acquired by that person. Therefore, it's only that person who knows how to best distribute it. Should I give it to this particular person or not? If he or she thinks that the, the child is actually an erring child, then it's his decision to not give it a, give away to that particular person or to give it to somebody else because he knows how to, uh, because he, you know, like he, is essentially he's giving back it, uh, and giving it as a gift. Having said all those things, we have today's debate. Thank you. Thanks, Robert, for my speaker. Thank you for this debate. Um, policy is really double punishment, right? We already clarified coming from our entire government bench that this is a simple add-on and expansion of the existing punishment, right? Because we actually want to redefine what punishment should be. We told you how it's not working the status quo, that it's not proportionate, it's not effective. If wealth is what uh, if wealth is what drives your socially bad behaviors or socially social misconduct, we think that it's only right we take away the driving factor or money. Just the same logic that if you have committed a crime as a drunk driver, the state also has the right to take away your right to um, consume alcohol or your t uh, take away your license to drive a car. It's the same logic, right? We take away the element that drives that social misconduct or socially bad behaviors, right? But two questions that I want to answer in my reply speech. One, I want to do a quick comparison of our model versus their counter proposal. And second, I want to talk a little bit more about why principle level justification isn't exactly the best metric to judge this debate than what is. So first, let's do a quick comparison of our model versus their alternative, right? So their alternative and counter proposal is that they want to strengthen and implement further education without a really specific mechanism of how that's going to work um, anyway, right? We, told, we tell you that whether education is going to work or not is a deadlock at best, right? If, if they could not prove why education right now does not work, in making children fear like you know doing these like socially bad behaviors they also cannot prove uh, how a little bit more education is actually going to work right sure we think it's a deadlock because some people or some children might find it re-educational or whatnot but some children who have wealthier amount of money that they are not afraid of the punishment or education might not be able to right we think that that's kind of benign measure like education or strengthening education we think that the impact of that counter proposal is limited and the benefits of re-education simply cannot be guaranteed on their side of the house but on the other side, what does our model look like, right? We told you how this takeaway is the only direct mechanism that can actually universally work with these children in tackling and changing the calculus and mentality of these children in their years, right? This fear and breaking down that illusion and delusion is what is necessary to change or alter their behaviors, right? If you're scared of having this money taken away or this inheritance, then don't do drugs, don't assault people, or don't be like delic like ju juvenile, delinquent, like delinquent juvenile or whatnot, right? We think that logic or the men mentality is very clear. But second, what justifies the government to take away the property, right? We think we both agree, coming from the government and on, on the opposition, that when um, the government is justified, when there is a public interest and a clear utility, right? But we prove to you, coming from the government, that one, how money is reasonably the altering factor in the mentality and behavior of the child, and second, how money and inheritance is the source of the harm in driving that socially bad behavior or that social misconduct, right? So we think that if you know the social misconduct or socially bad behaviors go unfixed, that's exactly what eventually leads to rape, it leads to further like serious crimes or oppression, we don't think it's just a problem of an arrogant kid, it's the problem of what happens when an arrogant kid does not fix their mentality as a result of lacking education or their counter proposal that simply does not work, right? So we think that in the essence of we think that the essence of the debate is this. We don't think that the principle of justification is a metric of the debate. We think the metric of the debate is on which side can we create social good or on which side can we at least minimize and reduce the social harms that are already happening in the society. We told you how the punishment that we 
we have right now doesn't work on the rich kids, the most important stakeholder of today's debate, right? We told you how, we told you therefore, how there is a necessity to actually alter their behaviors, how there is a necessity to break down the delusion and delusion that even if I get this punishment or so jail time, jail time I still have this much asset and this much money that I can fall back on. We want to break down that mentality. So if you don't, so if you don't want to lose your money, don't fuck up. And if you fuck up further because you're radical, then we're going to take more away, right? We think that the logic is very simple. We don't understand why the opposition doesn't find that, um, you know, reasonable enough. So we think that at the end of the day, we also have a compelling reason why we want to take away this property, why the government is justified in doing so. It's in creating that social good, or it's in minimizing that social harm and thus um, minimizing that social harm that exists in the society, which is also not fixed with our counter proposal. We're very proud to propose. Thank <laughs> you.